Hi, today we're continuing on with our discussion of video cards. This is section 8.4 on choosing video cards. There's actually a quiz that you can't see right now between 8.4 and 8.5 called 8.45 that I'll ask you to take after this one and make sure you understand a couple things. So let's get started. This section is on how to choose the right video card and the things you need to think about when choosing a video card. So first thing, and we talked about these specifications, by the way, last class. So some of these things are a review that I'm going to talk about today, and then we're going to look at some uh, web pages and stuff to help us on our, our choices and how to choose video cards. So the first thing we already talked about last class is considering the form factor. We need to know what is going to fit in our case with the existing parts that we have. If we're looking at a video card and we're like, this is the perfect one, and it doesn't have the right form factor for our case, then now where are we at? Now we have to build a whole new computer. We have to uh, rebuild our computer into a different case. It all depends. I'm going to give you an example of considering form factor. The PC I've got over in the corner of my classroom over there does not have a extra uh, power connector or any free power connectors for a video card. So, um, I can't replace the power supply because it's a very specific dedicated power supply for the uh, Dell Optiplex 9020. And so I, when I had to consider the form factor for that upgrade on that video card, I had to only consider video cards that A, were not um, very large um, because I didn't have any free slots either, and B, had no external power connectors for it. Uh, and there are a very limited number of cards that fell into that uh, spot. In fact, I ended up going with the uh, NVIDIA 1050 Ti, was the best video card I could get that did not require additional power. And that's part of the selection of form factor. So I need to look at how many slots I'm going to use. Uh, is it going to use one? Is it going to use two? Is it going to use four slots? What am I going to cover up if I use uh, more slots? and will physically fit and will have the power connectors. So that's part of all the form factor of the video card that we're looking at when we consider the form factor of where it's going to go. Next thing, and I just said that, is what kind of power connectors? Now, if you're building in a traditional ATX case, uh, I may be required to replace the power supply. In my case, I couldn't replace the power supply. It just wasn't an option for me. There was no replacement power supply that had more power connectors. I could buy the Dell replacement, but I had the same number of power connectors and I was back at the same place I was before. So do you have the power available for what you're trying to put in there? If you don't, uh, you either have to go with a lower power supply. So I have to look at how many watts the, pa the video card is pulling and it will be in the specifications. Um, so it's not just the power connectors, but the amount of wattage that it's pulling. Is that available in my system? And that goes all the way back to chapter three, calculating power wattages and what I need in my system. So do I have the connectors? And there are adapters. So if I've got free Molex connectors or SATA power supply connectors, there are adapters I can get that go from that to the PCIe uh, video card. Um, so if I've got free 12 volt power cords of one kind, I can go and turn it into the other kind in order to have that um, ability and happen to have one of those um, right here. This takes a SATA connection um, that comes off my power supply and turns it into an eight or six pin. I can pull one of these off if it's a six pin. Um, PCIe power cord. So this is a one-to-one. -one. So if I have one SATA, I can turn it into a PCIe. I actually bought this as a two-pack. It costs five bucks in order to make a video card that didn't have the PCIe. It's a very specific um, power supply connector for video cards, and they can be eight or six pins. And if you can see me taking that off of there, uh, I should put it over here so you can see a little better. Mm, I don't know if you still can see it but that wire, that extra wire comes apart to make it an eight or six pin connector. So that's the next thing I need to consider is the power connections available. And then what kind of display outputs do I have? Do I have the display outputs I need on um, the card, or I mean on the uh, monitor I'm gonna connect it to? Do I need to get an adapter? Um, or do I need to get a new monitor? Because it's possible that 
I've only got digital outputs. And there are digital to analog adapters. We use them uh, here at school, but it will lower the quality. So why would I put a high-end video card that like this one down here that's got all digital display outputs. I've got DVI um, and that's DVI-D. It does not do the analog output like this one. If you remember those four holes there make it do an analog output with um, an adapter. And then I've got HDMI, HDMI, DisplayPort, DisplayPort. I'm taking a high-end uh, video card and uh, basically ruining the high-end video card part of it and creating an analog output. Sometimes it's better just get a new monitor. Uh, if I do an adapter that goes from a digital to a digital, I'm not losing anything really. So I have to consider the display outputs there as well. I need to look at how much video RAM, and we know it's called GDDR or graphics uh, DDR RAM. Uh, how much do I need for a specific um, uh, application? That's actually 4.5. We're going to look at specific applications there to look at um, what I need, but how much uh, video RAM does a specific card have? And then we've got those, those other three specs that we talked about last time. We've got what is the GPU clock speed? A higher clock speed in general may mean better performance. How many cores does it have or stream processors? And we talked about the fact that th these are comparable but not straight line comparable things. So CUDA cores is an NVIDIA thing. So how many CUDA cores does it have? And when we look at AMD, we're talking about stream processors. And as I said last class, you can't compare CUDA cores to stream processors. The numbers aren't going to match, but you can compare CUDA cores to CUDA cores and stream processors, stream processors, just like we couldn't compare AMD and Intel straight line. We had to use some kind of testing to actual actually compare those to each other. Memory bandwidth, however, we can compare because memory is similar in each kind of uh, card that we put in there. So how fast is the memory that's on our card will obviously make a difference on how fast the card performs. So we need to know those specifications when we're looking at a card as well. So how are we going to put this together and compare it? We're going to use a web page. Uh, called Passmark, which we already looked at for CPUs. The only difference is now we're going to look at Passmark testing for our video cards. Now, I'm, we're going to go to this page in a, in a minute, but I'm going to show you on the left-hand side when we go to Passmark video cards, we have a number of different options here. The number one option that it comes to is looking at video cards that are high-end. We can look at high-end, mid-range, low-end, but in general, when we're looking for a new video card, we're probably wanting to look on the high-end uh, list. Farther up the list has a higher pass mark rating, and that means that is the best card. So as of April 2023, the best card on this list is the GeForce RTX 4090, which we know is made by NVIDIA because GeForce is NVIDIA and Radeon is AMD. That's the name of their processors. Um, kind of like Intel called the i7 and AMD was the Ryzen's, the, those things just kind of go together. So here's the benchmark score that it comes with from a specific test. Um, and this is just one test. There are other web pages we can go to to do the same thing, but this gives us a good overall score. Ones that are relatively close together are relatively similar. We can look at it by that mark, or we can also look at it by price versus performance. If I click on that, then I'm getting both the score for the testing here, but then also a value score. And the higher number this is, is the better value that is. And you can see I've kind of got a, the, the higher it is this way on our I guess it's that way when I'm looking at it backwards. The higher it is this way is the better value it is. In other words, the higher mark you get per dollar. So you can see this one is the fastest, the RTX 4090. That doesn't mean it's the best value for your money. Now, if you're trying to get the fastest, it's still going to be the fastest. But if you're trying to get a good value, if I go down here, the 4070 Ti, has a much better value for the score. So if I'm looking at these, the Radeon 6950 XT has the highest on this top 15 list that we're looking at right here of price per performance. But look, it's 
It may only be $679, and I'm using only loosely, um, but it also only has a 2900, 29,000 score versus a 39,000 score. So if I'm trying to find something in the top five for the best value, that one's going to be the RTX 4070 Ti has the highest points per dollar. And that's the way this works. Basically, it's taking this score and divided by this price and giving it a price performance score. Just so you know, that exists there too. If you're uh, press for funds, and I'm trying to get as good as I can, then this is your choice right here. It's the 4070 Ti. Then we can also look at all cards on a price performance one, which is down here on best the best value list. So if I were to click down there on best value, this whole list is for per dollar. So the, the best performance for my penny is this Radeon RX 60 650 XT. It's giving the most amount, amount of points per dollar. And if I wanted to, I could look for the highest one on this rating. For instance, what am I going to get the most money for? Probably this GeForce RTX 3060 Ti, which is exactly what I bought my son for Christmas because it had the best performance per dollar that was above 20,000. So if you look there down that list, this one has a little bit higher there. I could have spent the exact same money and got a little bit better card with the Radeon card. I'm a NVIDIA GeForce fanboy, so I have a tendency to go that way. So we're going to go and take a look at those. I'm just going to point out there are other sites that do the same thing. This is uh, Tom's Hardware doing the exact same thing on a different uh, set of games. It actually does it based on the video setting that you're choosing. So this is saying if you had your monitor set to 1440p and you did it did test with eight different games, it does an eight different game average, then the top one it found out was the 4090, which if we go back here is also the top one from Passmark. However, the number two they found out was a 7900 XTX, and I did I even see that on here? 7900, there's the XT. I don't even see the 7900 XTX. It may not be on their radar yet. So uh, for those things, that's what it's saying. The second best performance was, and it's, and it's almost as good as the other one. So when we look at those performance charts, you can take it with a grain of salt. Um, you could also look at other charts when you're doing that to see what scores the other charts give you. But let's go ahead and go and take a look at uh, Passmark um, as our first choice today of websites. And I think I've got it linked right down here. There we go. Let me go to the Passmark site and we'll take a look at that. Okay, again today we're looking at uh, cards that we can afford. Um, and, and from the high-end chart. So I'm looking at the high-end chart, and by the way, you can see now they've got, and this is different than when I took the shot just a week ago, the 7900 XTX is rated as the, the third card on this one, whereas it wasn't even on there before. The 4090 and the 4080 are just slightly above that one. Let's look at the price performance chart. This one is above both those. So Price per performance, it's saying the best one in the top five is the 4070 Ti. It's got a 32,073 rating for only, only $799. Uh, it really doesn't have prices on, on laptop GPUs because you can't buy them separately. And that's why there's no number with those. Just letting you know that if I was buying a laptop with the 4090 laptop GPU, it's not as good as the separate card, but it is way up there on the chart. So you could get a gaming laptop with a 4090 or a 4080 integrated in it and have a good feeling that that was going to be a high performance gaming system. So we're going to go back over here to the performance. So if I take a look at this one, the highest rated one on the market right now is $1,599. I'm going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and click on that one and take a look at it. So when I'm looking at the Passmark information, 
bus interface is PCI 4.0, which is the newest one. Your motherboard not, may not do 4.0. Mine doesn't. It's only a 3.0 motherboard. So I'm not going to get the same performance out of this one that you would if you've got a newer motherboard because it's going to uh, channel it faster. Um, max memory, I can get 24 gig in there. The clock speed is 2230. We know there's much higher clock speeds on, on CPUs than I'm seeing on this GPU. It does use the current version, DirectX 12. It doesn't say 12 Ultimate. If it takes 12, it does 12 Ultimate 2. Just the newest version of DirectX is 12 Ultimate. It does OpenGL 4.6, which is currently the current version of OpenGL as well. So power, it takes up to 450 watts. So if I was gonna put this in my system, that's part of that consideration. Do I have 450 watts available with my current config to throw this in it. I will tell you, I do not have a single system that has 450 watts available to be able to put this uh, motherboard in there. So I would need to buy a power supply when I bought this motherboard for my system. Uh, has it just letting us know it's RTX 4090. It was first benchmark back in October of last year. And uh, it's given us some frame rates for different DirectX numbers here. And let's go ahead and look and see if we can find it on Newegg, if it's actually there. And we're going to take a look at this. Oh, I, I clicked Newegg, and I, oh, no, it was Best Buy. Oh, and it says Newegg not available. I'm going to go there and see if that's a true statement or not. So on Best Buy, it's got this uh, 4090 with uh, 24 gig of RAM of DDR6X. This one is made by MSA. MSI. And like I told you in class before, NVIDIA makes GPUs. They don't make video cards. Somebody else has to put it all together. Somebody else makes the card, throws the GPU in it, throws the amount of memory in it. So I could have a 4090, uh, RTX 4090 video card with that GPU in it that performs better or worse than other ones because I put in faster memory or I put in more memory so I could get a variety of performances. So I need to look at those things, not just that. So this one's made by MSI. Let's see if it's got the specifications down here. Looking at this one, maximum resolution is 8K. Wow, I don't have a monitor that goes that high. Um, so it, it will do an 8K monitor. It uh, boosts up to 20 520 megahertz on the CPU or 2.5 gigahertz. It's got 24 gig um, of memory of GDDR6. Uh, will just support up to four displays on there, PCI Express 4.0. Slot size, triple slot. So I'm not going to use one or two. I'm going to use three slots on my motherboard. So from where I put that in, it's going to cover the one next to it and the one next to that. I need to know that I've got that kind of room on my uh, motherboard in order to do that. Uh, let's see, uh, maximum resolution that we already looked at that. We've got um, 450 watts for the um, video card. Recommended power supply is 850 watts. They're saying if you have an 850 watt power supply, you should be fine because a normal motherboard and CPU and case will only use 400. So You've got 450 left there. Uh, cooling system is fan. It's got a three-year parts and labor warranty. Let's look at some of the pictures on that card itself. So here's our card. If I look at the top of the card, here's our power supply connector. And this uses a different power supply connector than I have used in the past. And it says it takes three. I'm going to say they're a liar because if it sticks out this far from the third one, I need three in the back, but really it is four wide. I would have a hard time believing that you can get this inside your case and use this slot right here with anything at all. So looking at this picture, it's a good reason to take a look at the pictures. I don't think, I think this is a four slot card, not a three slot card. So let's hop back over here to Passmark. So as I look at these, and this is always the case, the ones that are the highest on the list are generally the newest. The newest ones aren't always available like we'd like to see them. So I might not be able to find a 4090 or a 4080. Let's look at this Radeon right here. It's also using 
G DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.6. Let's take a look at it and see if we can find it on Newegg. Not available, not available. On Amazon, it says it is. Let's see if we can see this one on Amazon. There's the 7900 XTX. This is uh, $1,000 for just a little bit under, which is why it's a better value. If I look back here at the pass mark and I go to the price performance, this is a better value than both of these, but the 4070 Ti is even a better value and it's almost the same number. Look at how close those are together. I would be buying the 4090 before I'd buy any of the other ones. Um, let's look and see if this one's available everywhere. And it is also still not on Newegg, but it says it's for $799 on, oh, it is not $799, it's $800. Um, let's take a look with also three fans. Um, this one, it might be three wide. I'm going to say it is. It's got two and it's hanging over. So it's going to cover at least three, but look, these fans are going to be right up against the next card as well let's look at the power connector this one is a more traditional power connector it's still not my normal pci connector it's got a very different pci connector let's see if we can find the connector for that because that is not a normal power supply out <laughs> that apparently the 16 pin adapter cables are melting down look at that excellent um Apparently, it's having such a power drain and the thing's so hot that it's melting its own power supply cable of, <laughs> of the one that comes with the NVIDIA card. So it apparently uh, comes with the adapter cable. So it has an adapter cable. It says it fuses four 8-pin PCIe power cables into a single 12-pin that's used by the card. Uh, each individual PCI power cable delivers 150 watts, up to 150 watts, which says it sums out to 600 watts, although we saw that the manufacturer recommended you have 450 watts free. So that is a humongous draw of power that you need to make sure you've got uh, the ability to plug in four to, do, to this one. Uh, this is really an investment in your system if you were to go that far. So those are the kind of things that we need to look at when we're looking at um, video cards. It may be the highest ranked up here on Passmark, if I can get back to it, but that doesn't mean it's one that I'm gonna be able to just toss in my computer and have work. I'm wondering if the 4070 has the same thing. Let's go back to the 4070 and take a look at that one. Okay, I googled 4070 Ti graphics card unboxing. I'm not going to listen to the audio of this person unboxing it, but it is the 4070 Ti. Look how huge that video card is. Talk about space required inside there. Unquestionably a huge card. Hopping around while you're watching this. This is the RTX 7090 XTX. Um, it uses standard PCIe 8-pin connectors. So this adapter that I just showed you uh, over here. I don't know if you can see it any better. That goes from PC or from a regular SATA connector to an 8-pin would work on that one. Doesn't require really a special cable because most uh, modern power supplies that you would get already have two 8-pin PCIe connectors on there. So the RTX, um, the Radeon RTX 7090 XTX is at the top of the list and it uses standard power connectors. The uh, Radeon, I mean, the uh, NVIDIA ones do all appear from all my searching to come with uh, the adapter cable as well. So either way you go, you probably will be happy. However, looks like the 4090 has had melting initials issues. I would be, I would be shying away from those. I'd be down here at uh, looking at these two for the difference in price, especially when I look at that price performance marker. And I know that both these two get more performance for my money and i'm down here at 800 bucks versus up here at uh, 1600 bucks for one that really isn't that much better because if i look at this one i got a 32,000 score versus a 39,000. that's a, a few percentage points uh, several percentage points better but at the same time i don't know that i'm want to look at that so let's get back to this page as i go down the page i get 
uh, lower performance and it, on the high end cards it goes all the way down on what it's calling high end down here to how it's the bottom of the high end data 2200 which is no way high end card just to give you a for instance the 1660 super is what's inside um, the uh, gaming computers in the library that esports use it's got a score of 12,800 and it cost me under $200 when I got those cards. The price as I go up, you can see cards that are far more expensive um, that are only a little bit better. As I go buying, if I, when I'm building a system, I basically build my system around what I can afford for a video card. So as I'm going to the next chapter, in chapter nine, and I'm looking at things, and I look at my whole system, I need to kind of break those things together, and then I'll work my way down to what I can afford and look at the highest one. It's in my price range. Maybe I've only got $400 available for my card. So as I go down here, I'm looking at either the Radeon RX 6750 XT or the GeForce 3060 Ti, which because it's up here at the top end, but it's down below $400. In fact, I got rebuilt ones at Newegg under $300, which is always an option as a personal consumer, but not something we do during our projects. We only buy new for our projects. But that's how I go and shop for video cards. I'm using a site like this to give me a true indication of the speed and then I work my way down into what I can afford. I might look at pure, pure performance. I also might want to look at the price performance. And if I'm looking purely price performance, then I can go to this best value one, which is the other one I wanted to look at. So as I go to best value, this is just best value. Doesn't mean fastest. So the one that's the 6650 XT is the most performance for my money. It's $279. Now, what I really do is I go down until I hit the price I'm looking for. And now, if I said I'm, I want to be under $400, again, we're looking at the same one again, the Radeon RX 6750 XT. Let's go ahead and open that one and take a look at that one. Again, DirectX 12, OpenGeo 4.6. Um, the one thing I didn't look at as we're doing this, let me go down and take a look and see it's not available on Newegg again. I can buy it on Amazon, which we know never has all the uh, information they want. But let's take a look at some of the pictures. This looks like a true, at least from what I can sell, tell from that picture, this is actually a true two slot video card, which is what I normally am looking for. Those big three and four slot ones I just don't have room for. So not only is this one the highest one value wise, it's also going to fit inside my computer most likely. It's a big three cooling fan system. If I zoom in there, I can see it looks like it takes a standard power connector, although I can't really tell there. It looks like that's a six pin. So it looks like it takes one six pin and one eight pin power connector on there. So that's made by Gigabyte is the manufacturer on this one. It is a Radeon AMD CPU, but the card itself is made by Gigabyte, which we also talked about in our motherboard presentations as a ma major motherboard manufacturer as well. There's one other thing we didn't really get to see. This site, and that's the problem with Amazon, is not giving us all the specs that we would like to, to see. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go try to Google it and see if I can get more of the specs on the card by going like I want to do right to the Gigabyte site. Do not ever trust the sales site to have all the information I wanted. I'm going to go to the specifications to look at all those things that we've talked about. And here's number one. None of those sites said how many stream processors it has. It says 2,560 stream processors on that. And if I'm comparing card to card, that's one of the things I may want to look at. Again, I can't compare CUDA cores from NVIDIA with stream processors because the numbers don't coincide at all. But I do know that I've got GDDR6, it's a 192-bit bus, the memory bandwidth is 432 gigabytes per second. And now I can look at the true information on this. It does take DirectX 12 Ultimate on here. 
Um, recommended power supply is 650 watts. Doesn't say the power consumption on there. It's just recommending a 650 watt power. So that's it. That's that's the things we're going to look at when we're buying a CPU. We're going to look at the at the rating. We're going to look at the price performance index, and then we're going to look at those specifications and take a good look around with the pictures to get a true impression of how this thing will fit inside our our computer and looking at the power connectors both times it didn't really give a listing of what power was required just the wattage not the connectors and without doing a little research you won't be able to find that okay so before we move on this video is the first video on um, buying a video graphics card i want to caveat that it's slightly old but it's a good video we're going to watch this together as a class. If you saw me in class, we probably already did this in class, so you would need to watch this again, but that's not the case in 2023. So um, we'll go ahead and watch this video as a class, realizing he's talking about DirectX 12 or 11 instead of 12. Some of the ideas are a little bit outdated, but in general, everything he said is spot on. Shopping for a PC graphics card, you will be bombarded with misinformation. Mostly, people aren't intentionally misleading you. Mostly. Usually, they just don't understand what they're selling, but you're the one who ends up getting burned. The biggest misconception is this. No, you cannot compare performance by looking at specifications. Take these cards in completely different price brackets, for example. This 4 gig graphics card is only about $100, but no, it is not an amazing deal compared to this 4 gig one for $1,000. Sure, they're both GeForce, they both have DirectX 11, their clock speeds are similar, and the RAM amount is the same. But the $1,000 card is easily more than an order of magnitude faster than the $100 one because these cards use different design architectures. Here's an analogy. A modern loaded semi can travel around 1,400 miles on a single tank of fuel. In 2009, Ford's Fusion Hybrid traveled around 1,400 miles on a single tank of fuel. These are similar specs and they're both interesting facts, but they have have nothing to do with each other. A semi has a 200 gallon fuel tank, runs on diesel, and carries an enormous load. While that hybrid has a 17 and a half gallon fuel tank, runs on gas and electricity, and carries around one dude. Another flawed method of comparing specifications is to compare across different graphics processor manufacturers. This chart is interesting, sure, but I also have another big word for it that starts with I because it cannot conclusively tell us which of these is better than the other. It just doesn't work that way. And that's not to say that looking at specs is always a total waste of time. When comparing products based on the same design architecture and with similar specifications to each other, relative performance can sometimes be inferred, but even this should be done with great caution. So at this point, you're probably getting frustrated. How do we actually compare performance? Real games. You want to know how they actually run on the card that you're looking at. This information is definitely out there. We do graphics card reviews on the Linus Tech Tips YouTube channel, but it's important to find a review that covers the games that you want to play with gear that's realistic for you. For example, if you have a 1080p monitor, don't buy based on a review where the cards were tested at 4K resolution. But there's great news. Aside from my other channel, there are literally hundreds of sites that review graphics cards. A few of my favorites in no particular order, also linked in the video description, are HardwareCanucks.com and OnTech.com and PCPer.com. Okay, so now you're sitting there saying, fine Linus, but what about all the stuff besides performance? Stability, heat output, power consumption, and other software features. These are all important to me too. Well, there's a ton of information out there about that stuff too, but it's a little outside the scope of this video and I know it can be overwhelming, but the odds are excellent that if you ch go charging into a typical PC hardware community asking questions like, who do you think has the best drivers, AMD or Nvidia? You're gonna start an argument. So at least let me point you in the right direction. In my mind at the time of filming this, AMD's key advantages are true audio, project mantle, and great multi-monitor support with their iFinity technology. Nvidia's key advantages are game stream, GeForce experience with shadow play, and G-Sync, which makes undesirable effects like lag due to V-Sync and tearing due to high frame rates disappear. And I guess if you want a game in stereo 3D, then 3D vision would also be an advantage for Nvidia. Now, I'm gonna try to update this video with annotated links to my own explanations of these technologies, but it might take me a while. So in the meantime, you can head over to linustechtips.com. Our community forum is, I believe, friendlier than most, so you can seek additional clarity about these features. Speaking of features, our featured sponsor for this video is Hotspot Shield, a VPN solution that can be set. 
Okay, quick jump out of there. These are the ones he said he liked the best. If you Google video card benchmarks, you're going to find a number of ones. The top one is Passmark uh, when I just Googled it, which is who I use. That doesn't mean any of the others, these other ones aren't perfectly good sites to use as well. So right now, we've watched this video. In fact, I've just replaced the one we see right here. Uh, you should go to section four of the um, online book for 8.4's information. I'd like you to read this article right here, which kind of reviews what I just talked about uh, and talks a little bit more about some specific specifications. It says it takes seven to nine minutes to read. As far as the videos, you do not need to watch the videos because we just watched this one, and this one's going to be our intro into the next section anyway, so you don't need to watch that one right now. Just take your time. Make sure you go through the reading before entering the quiz. It should take you another, um, we'll say 15 minutes from this point in the class before you should all be done. Please make sure you tell the substitute teacher when everyone's done with the quiz so they can move on with the next section. We'll review the quiz in that section as well. Thanks.